So I'm going to apply the fundamental counting principle for the next couple because you can see that, uh, and I'll explain the why as we go through here. So how many different four-letter call names for radio stations can there be if the first letter must be a W or a K? Okay, so we have four different uh, call letters. First, second, third, and fourth. So when you're looking at how many choices do you have for each of these possible selections, the first letter has to be W or K. So it doesn't actually go in as W or K. It's how many choices do you have? Well, I have two choices. After that, it, there's no restrictions, we call it. So if there's no restrictions, that means they can pick any letter that they choose. So for those that aren't sure, there are 26 letters in the alphabet. 26 and 26. They're all independent. Doesn't matter what the previous letter was. Go ahead and calculate that. I'm just going to leave it as 2 times 26 cubed, uh, just because it's shorter and I don't have to go with my calculator. So therefore, there are 2 times 26 cubed different possibilities. All right. So uh, one of the things I do want to point out for the course, uh, I do need to see these headings if you're going to use the fundamental counting principle. Okay. Those headings keep it clear to me as to what you're doing or what you're doing the calculations for. Secondly, do you need to calculate everything out? Uh, in this case, no, because the number is getting fairly large, so I'm not too picky on that. I'm already giving you marks for process. That's where the bulk of the mark comes from. So how many different SIN social insurance numbers can be created using the numbers 0 to 9 when each, when each one has 9 digits? So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so for each of those digits, how many options do we have? Well, there is no restriction other than 0 through 9. So that means that there's 10 possibilities for each option. So some rules of exponents are good to know. And being able to use exponents a little bit in this course is handy because rather than me going through and calculating that out, I'm just going to say, hey, that's 10 multiplied by itself 9 times. So you can see why they have a nine-digit social insurance number, so that it can handle the majority of population without a change. So therefore, there are 10 to the ninth possible cards or possible numbers. Now, will they ever have to change that? Uh, I don't believe so, because I think what they do is, after a certain period of time, they'll start recycling older ones from people that have passed away uh, many years ago, and it introduces a new number to the system then, so um, it allows them to regurgitate them, unless Canada's population really, really explodes. Finally, the last example, and this is the most important one, I think, because the other ones I think most people are getting the hang of are, are finding uh, straightforward. Indirect is very, very important because it's a, it's a powerful tool when we get into a little bit of trouble trying to find things what we call directly. So those previous examples, I've been solving things what we call directly. So indirect is finding the opposite of what you want. All right, and I'll show you the, the why here first. And I can try to explain the why we want to do that. So it says in this example, an athlete has four pairs of running shoes in her gym bag. How many ways can she pull out two unmatched shoes one after another? Okay, so if I do it directly, and I'm just going to make a a brief note to show you. You can do this one directly. I've picked a simple example so I can show the direct method. So she has four pairs of shoes. So let's say pair one. So let's go, um, I'll organize it. So pair number. All right, we'll make a bit of a chart. So pair one. Okay. Um, she wants to pull out, how many ways pull out unmatched shoes? Well, pair one. Uh, if you pull a blue shoe, let's say, there's three ways not to pull out a blue shoe. For pair number two, there's three ways not to pull out a pair of shoe. Uh, four, three ways to pull out an unpaired shoe. Oops, I don't know why I skipped over three. And finally, the fourth shoe, there's three ways. Okay. So that means that we would add these up. Okay. And remember that this is the pair number, so we can't multiply those together. So there's actually a total number of 
12 ways to find an unpaired shoe. All right. Now you're saying, well, that's not that long. And I agree, but I had to pick an example where I could show it in long to, to make the comparison. So indirect. All right. Indirect method. Uh, your steps. So step one. Step number one. Find total ways. Something can be done. It can be done with no restrictions. And that's the key, with no restrictions. So that's basically saying, how many ways can you pull two, sho two shoes out of a bag? Okay. So for this example, how many shoes are in the bag? I can't see your hands. You realize that, right? This is video. Just check it. Just double checking. Okay, so um, there are, if we have uh, four pairs of shoes, that means there's eight shoes in the bag. So that means my first pull, I have eight shoes to pick from. And then I have seven shoes to pick from. Okay, which means that I have a grand total of, so we end up with 56. Okay. Uh, I just realized from my direct method here, I made a bit of a mistake. Um, so you weren't copying right behind me anyway. Um, it's because I, I was thinking I'm only picking one pair out. So let's say for pair number one, let's say the green shoes. I have two ways I can pull a green shoe out of the hat because there's two out of those eight shoes that I put in the bag. There's two in there. So I pick um, two out. Of, I have two choices or two, two ways to pull a green shoe. I pull the green shoe out. Okay, there's still one in there, so I got to eliminate that. So there's six left that will make an unmatching pair. Okay, so think of it this way: green, green, blue, blue, red, red, um, yellow, yellow. So let's say I pull a green shoe out. So I had two options for pulling a green shoe out. That's where the two comes from. It's gone. I want to make sure it's an unmatching pair, so I have to eliminate that one. So there's six left. So actually there's 12, and following that theory all the way down, 2 times 6 is 12, 2 times 6 is 12, which gives me a grand total of 48 ways. I apologize for that. So going back to the indirect method then, step one, you find the total ways something can be done with no restriction. So how many ways can you pull two shoes out of the bag? Well, there's eight in the bag to start with. Seven left after you pull one out, so there's 56 ways. Step two then. Okay, find what you don't want. Okay, so find what you don't want. All right, so if you read the question, how many ways can she pull out two unmatched pairs? Let's go the other way then. The opposite of that is how many ways can you pull out a matched pair? Okay, so how many ways can you pull out a matched pair? So first, second, so we have eight choices for our first draw. There's eight shoes in the bag. Once you pick that shoe, green, yellow, blue, or orange, or whatever we've got up there, there's only one possibility for your second pick. So there are eight ways that I can pull out what I don't want. Step three then. So step number three, uh, take the total and subtract what you don't want. What you don't want. And what that does is that gives you what you want. So therefore, 56 take away 8 is 48 ways. All right. So in this case, you would you, you approach it from the opposite way. And the nice thing with this, over here, I'll just finish this up. Over here, I only had four pairs of shoes, so there's four cases in total. All right. So what happens if I put 10 pairs of shoes or 20 pairs of shoes into the bag? Okay, all of a sudden, your number of cases or, or things that you have to look at 
increase significantly. Here, there is always step number one. There's always step number two. And then step three, that's always, regardless how many cases are involved. So indirect is a huge advantage. And when you can identify, how, how do you know when to use it? When you start saying, holy cow, there's going to be a lot of cases. As soon as you say to yourself, man, this is going to be a lot of work, then you should be using the indirect method, okay, or at least attempting it. All right, good luck with the first set of homework. If you have any questions, you know that I'll be in class giving you a hand, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you later. Thank you.